Canadian woman Melinda Vasily was stabbed 47 times in the neck and chest by her former lover who refused to accept that their relationship was over. The 22-year-old and Aga Hassan had been together for about a year before they broke up on April the 3rd of 2017. Days after the breakup, Hassan broke into Vasily's kitchen at home in an attempt to contact her, attacking her roommate and her roommate's brother in the process. The 24-year-old was arrested and charged with breaking and entering as well as two counts of assault. He was released on bail with the conditions that he stay out of the victim's residence, refrain from communicating with Vasily and not own any weapons. However, the man continuously reached out to Vasily nevertheless. Later that month, the pair arranged to meet up to discuss their breakup. On the night of April 27th of 2017, Hassan went to Vasily's home and the two talked in her bedroom. Shortly before 3 a.m., two of Vasily's roommates arrived home to find Vasily lying on the floor, covered in blood and suffering from what appeared to be a high number of stab wounds. Meanwhile, Hassan had already fled to the United States via the Peace Bridge. A few days later, a Reddit user believed to be Hassan published a lengthy post on the online platform that contained alleged details about the incident and claimed he had acted in self-defense. The post included several photos of Hassan and Vasily, as well as excerpts of a text conversation between them on the night of the murder. In July, Hassan was arrested during a traffic stop in San Antonio, Texas, and was extradited to Canada to face charges of second-degree murder and three counts of breach of recognizance. Text conversations recovered from his phone were consistent with messages recovered from Vasily's phone during his trial. Testimony revealed the defendant was a jealous man obsessed with the false notion that the victim cheated on him. The court heard that during Vasily's stabbing, the blade of one knife got bent but Hassan grabbed another knife and continued the attack. In May of 2023, Hassan was found guilty of the charges and was later sentenced to life imprisonment. He would be eligible for parole after serving 16 years. Number 10. Tracy Lorraine Aragon July the 26th of 2017, a Texas woman was arrested for violating a statute also known as the Revenge Porn Law after she shared nude photos of the man who ended their relationship. Tracy Lorraine Aragon from San Antonio had sent the explicit photos to her former lover's friends and posted them on Facebook. The pictures show the man unconscious with his pants down. When the victim confronted Aragon, she reportedly ridiculed and insulted him as well as threatened him that she'd blast him if he messed with her. A warrant for the woman's arrest was obtained after the ex reported the photos to the police. Ultimately, Aragon was charged with publishing intimate material and booked at Bexar County Jail on a $2,000 bond. Number 9. Carol Ann Mansfield After breaking up in 2003, Carol Ann Mansfield from Waterbury, Connecticut, unexpectedly showed up to her ex-boyfriend's home 10 years later to demand $20. The 44-year-old went to the man's New Haven residence on May the 2nd of 2013, yelling and demanding the aforementioned amount of cash. She claimed that she'd loaned him the money at some point in their time together as a couple. The 53-year-old man repeatedly asked her to leave, but Mansfield only got more enraged. The man then decided to give her the money to avoid further disturbance in the neighborhood after which he called the police and made a complaint. Upon officers' arrival, they arrested Mansfield on charges of first-degree criminal trespass and second-degree breach of peace. They also served her with four outstanding warrants, which included charges of criminal mischief, criminal trespassing, failure to appear in court, and probation violation, among others. What can you say? Twenty dollars is twenty dollars. Number 8. Madison Rogers A Tennessee woman was accused of vandalism and aggravated burglary after she was caught on security video destroying a part of her ex-boyfriend's Nashville home on May the 31st of 2019. 
The victim reported a home invasion and when responding officers arrived, told him that earlier that day he'd ended his relationship with his girlfriend of two years. He added that he'd just returned home when he heard pounding on the door and that when he went to the door, his ex-girlfriend, 21-year-old Madison Rogers, kicked it open and began hitting him. The man restrained Rogers and carried her outside his home where he called 911. While outside, Rogers allegedly asked if he liked the upstairs before she fled the scene. The man immediately checked the upper story of his home and found his bedroom, bathroom, and closet destroyed, with several items including a $100 lamp broken. Investigators reviewed security footage which corroborated the man's statement. A week later, Rogers was arrested, booked into the Metro jail, and subsequently released on a $5,000 bond. According to Davidson County court records, the vandalism charge was dismissed a year later after the woman met the conditions of a deferred judgment it is unclear if she was convicted of the aggravated burglary charge. Number 7. Jose Ricardo Ortiz III On February 13th of 2017, Florida man Jose Ricardo Ortiz III was shot to death by his former girlfriend after he'd allegedly asked her for money. The 26-year-old had been dumped by 24-year-old Catherine Jean Tonner a week earlier but the two continued living in the same Gainesville apartment building. On the day in question, one of their roommates, who was in another room on the third floor, heard three loud bangs. As he went down to the second floor to check, he saw Tonner's car driving away. The roommate checked Tonner's bedroom, where he found Ortiz face down on the floor with a fatal gunshot wound to the head. He immediately called 911. Meanwhile, Tonner drove to her parents' house where she called authorities to say that she'd shot her ex-boyfriend, claiming that the victim had solicited cash from her. When a deputy arrived at her parents' residence, she claimed that she'd never meant to hurt anyone. After obtaining a search warrant for the home, a loaded 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun was recovered in a kitchen drawer. Tonna was arrested and held behind bars without bond on charges of first-degree murder. In April of 2021, she was handed a 21-year prison sentence after being convicted of second-degree murder. Number 6. Ramon Molina A Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputy was called to a home in Lake Worth Beach, Florida, on the evening of April the 26th of 2022. A woman had called to report a verbal domestic dispute which had caused her to lock herself in a bathroom. Upon the deputy's arrival, he found a man, identified as Ramon Molina, outside a residence claiming that he just had a verbal argument with his ex-girlfriend. The 21-year-old explained that he and the woman's eight-month relationship had recently ended but he wanted to talk to her. When the deputy made contact with the victim inside the residence, the woman said that she wanted Molina to leave her alone. She stated that for the past two weeks, the man had called her workplace multiple times after she blocked him on her phone and offered to bring her Taco Bell and a wedding ring. Molina would even call her using other phones in an attempt to speak to her. The victim further added that she'd made it clear to Molina that she didn't want to speak to him anymore and wanted to move on. Molina was eventually arrested and charged with stalking. The 23-year-old was booked shortly after midnight and subsequently released. A no-contact order was issued against Molina, but two weeks after his arrest, he violated it when he again called the woman multiple times. He was arrested a second time and booked in the main detention center. Someday she's going to be craving Taco Bell and she will regret her decision to report him. Number 5. Kayla Zorn Kayla Zorn from Allenton, Michigan, was held behind bars on a $500,000 bond. After being accused of setting fire to a Chesterfield Township home occupied by three young children and three adults, including her ex-boyfriend, the incident took place in the early hours of April the 1st of 2015 at the residence located on Harrisburg Lane. 
The homeowner started to smell the odor of gasoline inside the home at around 1.40 a.m. and soon after spotted smoke and flames around the doorway. He started trying to put out the fire while a female resident got the other occupants out of the home and into safety. She then called 911, after which police and firefighters immediately responded. After the fire was put out, authorities determined that it had been intentionally ignited with the use of gasoline. The male resident told the officers that he'd been having problems with his ex-girlfriend, identified as Kayla Zorn, and believed she may be responsible for the blaze. The officers were familiar with the woman from a previous encounter and knew she drove a white Chevrolet Z71 pickup truck which they subsequently spotted a block away from the scene. The keys were in the ignition and there were two half-empty gas cans in the bed of the truck. They spotted Zorn in a yard down the street from her pickup, appearing wet and muddy. The officers approached her and detected a strong smell of gasoline on her clothing. They took the 29-year-old into custody on suspicion of arson and had her vehicle impounded. The suspect later admitted to detectives that she was upset with the resident of the home and the manner in which he ended their relationship. Zorn was charged with assault with intent to murder and second-degree arson. Months later, she was convicted of the charges. Records indicated that on January the 13th of 2016, Zorn was handed a 20 to 30 year jail sentence with the possibility of parole after serving nine years. Number four, Ben Kebble. 19 year old Catherine A. Mahoney was accused of punching her boyfriend, Ben Kebble, on March the 1st of 2018, after the latter merely suggested that they'd stop dating. The incident took place in Mahoney's dorm room at Fairfield University in Fairfield, Connecticut. After Kebble touched on the subject of ending their relationship, the woman responded by striking him in the stomach and nose, leaving him bleeding. Kebble eventually fought her off and subsequently ran to a friend's dorm room for help. The victim took himself to a local hospital to get treatment for a swollen and bloody nose. Mahoney was later taken into custody and booked in jail on a $1,500 bail. She was facing charges of third-degree assault and disorderly conduct. In the end, prosecutors dropped all the criminal charges. It's unclear why the charges were dropped and if the two are still together. If they are still together, then that's also unclear why. Number 3. Anna Bui, Jake Long and Jordan Ebner Anna was the first girl I ever kissed, was what Washington man Alan Christopher Ivanov told police after he fatally shot his ex and two others at a house party just because he was jealous of seeing her with another guy. Ivanov and Anna Bui, both aged 19, started dating in early 2015. After more than a year of dating, the pair broke up in mid-2016 after Ivanov reportedly told Bui he needed some time to work on himself. On July the 28th of the same year, Ivanov started posting on his Twitter account saying, first and last tweet, adding that he'd been through it all. That same week, he uploaded an Instagram photo of a rifle on the ground with three bullets on the side. On the evening of July the 28th, a graduation house party was being held in McKiltio, where at least 15 university and high school students were in attendance, including Bui. When Ivanov arrived at the party at around 10 p.m., he saw Bui with another male and he became enraged. After some time, he retrieved his rifle and crept around the side of the house, but was discovered by 19-year-old Jacob Long, whom he shot and killed just after midnight. Long collapsed and died next to the pathway on the ground. Ivanov continued firing outside, wounding 18-year-old Will Kramer, who fortunately managed to crawl away and escape. Ivanov's attention turned towards 19-year-old Jordan Ebner, and he shot him as well. Ivanov then walked in through the patio doors to where Bui was sitting and pulled the trigger multiple times at point-blank range, with some shots hitting her in the face. Afterwards, the gunman went upstairs to a balcony in the master bedroom and began firing more shots, grazing the leg of another male victim. Some survivors hid and contacted their relatives and authorities as the suspect fled. Kramer, the victim who had been able to crawl to safety after getting shot, was taken to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle and was listed in serious condition in the ICU. 
Witnesses gave responding police officers information that helped them catch Ivanov. Nearly two hours after the shooting, the man was arrested near Chihalis city after officers spotted his car. He was taken into custody without incident and an AR-15 type rifle and two magazines were recovered from his vehicle. In the aftermath, Ivanov confessed to committing the shooting that took the lives of Bury, Ebner and Long. He was charged with aggravated murder, attempted murder and assault. On December the 19th of 2016, he waived his right to appeal his sentence and pleaded guilty to the killings to avoid the death penalty. A month later, Ivanov was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Today's topic was requested by Femiraji6294 and Nikki123BXD. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Suzette Penton On October the 12th of 2022, 20-year-old Florida man Elijah Stansel was sentenced to life in prison after being convicted of fatally running over a romantic rival's mother, Suzette Penton, aged 52. Suzette's teen son Hunter and 15-year-old Kimberly Stone had previously dated but broke up in mid-2020. Stone eventually moved on with Stansel, but she and Hunter were still having a series of ongoing arguments that were taking place on social media in their exchange. Stone talked about a hit and said she'd have her new boyfriend handle it. After the school found out about the threatening messages, Stansel and Stone were suspended from the institution on November the 9th of 2020. Consequently, she and her teenage friends, Raven Sutton and Hannah Eubank, planned to go to Hunter's Polk City home to ambush him that day. Stansel drove the group using a church van he'd borrowed from his father's congregation. Upon arriving at the residence, Stone stayed in the van parked across the street as Stansel, together with the others, banged on the victim's front door. Hunter walked out onto his carport, at which point Stansel approached him and began hitting him. When he fled back into the house, the trio followed him. A glimpse of the beating, which was carried out by Stansel and Sutton, was captured by the home's interior surveillance cameras. The onslaught was put to a halt when Hunter's mother, Suzette, arrived home and chased the suspects out of the house. Suzette followed them and watched them get into their van. The mother began taking photos of the suspects and the van with her cell phone. Harrowing surveillance footage from one of the cameras in the neighborhood showed the woman standing in the roadway moments before Stansel drove his van directly towards her. The vehicle plowed into Suzette and mowed her down. The Polk County Sheriff said that the victim was run over so aggressively that it left tire tracks on her body. Suzette was rushed to Lakeland Regional Health Medical Center, where she was found to have sustained a traumatic brain injury involving a skull fracture and severe bleeding in her brain. She also suffered a broken leg and fluid in her lungs. The suspects were pulled over by authorities about seven miles from the scene. Upon being questioned, they admitted to going to the scene of the attack to confront Hunter. A few weeks after the incident, Suzette died as a result of her injuries. Stansel, Stone, Sutton and Eubank were initially charged with attempted murder and burglary with assault. However, after Suzette's death, Stansel's charge was upgraded to murder and the three others who were being charged as juveniles were turned over to adult court. Stansel was convicted of first-degree murder and burglary with assault and received life in prison. Sutton was also found guilty of burglary with assault and was sentenced to eight years. Court records indicate the cases against Stone and Eubank are still pending. After number one, we'll be tagging on our previous release about when breakups and rejections go wrong with many more cases yet to come. Stay put if you'd like. Number one, Olivia Drasher. In the wake of a bitter breakup, Pennsylvania man Aaron Christopher Clark went to his ex-girlfriend's home in Derby Township and tried to kill her entire family through arson. The 30-year-old and Amira Rogers had dated for a couple of months in 2022. But Rogers later found out that Clark had been communicating with his former lover on the morning of December the 3rd of 2022. Rogers went to Clark's residence and told him they were breaking up. 
The man started getting violent and choked her. The woman was able to break free from his chokehold and flee. Since both of them worked in the US Postal Service Center on the same shift, Roger spoke to her supervisor about what had transpired and requested her schedule be changed to avoid seeing her ex. Her schedule was changed, but Clark went on a texting and calling spree over the next 24 hours, trying to contact Rogers more than 300 times without getting a reply. At around 9 p.m. the day after he had gone to her house and attacked her, he sent her a message that stated, Pick up before I'll do something crazy. Shortly after, surveillance footage showed Clark lurking in Rogers' neighborhood, located in the 600 block of Sharon Avenue, before setting fire to the woman's residence. Almost all of Rogers' family members were able to escape, but her sister Olivia Drasher didn't survive. The wheelchair-bound 20-year-old who had cerebral palsy and was non-verbal was killed by smoke inhalation and burn wounds, according to the Delaware County District Attorney. Clark was arrested hours later and booked into jail on charges of murder, attempted murder, aggravated and simple assault, reckless endangerment, and arson, among other charges. While behind bars, he was still able to send threatening text messages to Rogers through an Apple Watch he had hidden in his rectum before being booked Officers eventually found out and confiscated the device. As of the latest updates, Clark is awaiting trial at the county prison where he is being held without bond. Number 7. George Hugely. In May of 2010, Yardley Love and her ex-boyfriend, George Hugely, were close to graduating from the University of Virginia. Both were star lacrosse athletes and had engaged in an on-again, off-again romance since their freshman years. Their relationship was turbulent at times, mainly due to Hugely's heavy drinking and violent outbursts while under the influence. At one point, he'd attempted to strangle Love and then sent her an email claiming he wished he'd killed her. His alcohol abuse gradually got worse when he became a senior and as graduation was approaching. It was also during that year that he and Love, both 22 at the time, had broken up. Hugely's teammates were on the verge of preparing an intervention for him but decided to wait until after the upcoming lacrosse tournaments. As Hugely's drinking increased, so did his aggressiveness. He reportedly beat up a teammate while he was sleeping for leaving a party with love. On May the 3rd of 2010, Hugely went to his ex-girlfriend's off-campus apartment. It was there that an argument erupted, resulting in the drunk and enraged athlete beating love repeatedly and inflicting fatal injuries by smashing her head against a wall. Love's roommates found her lying in a pool of her own blood with extensive wounds to her neck, face and jaw. Hugely was arrested following the attack and ultimately sentenced to 23 years in prison for second degree murder. Number 6. Benjamin Green On the night that she tried breaking up with him on August 27th of 2021, a young marketing executive was stabbed to death by her boyfriend. The incident took place in Kettering, Northamptonshire, England. 22-year-old Maddie Durdent Hollenby had been arguing with boyfriend Benjamin Green, 19 years her senior, about her decision of going on holiday without him. Her mother later told a media outlet that she'd headed to his home with the intention of putting an end to their relationship. Friends then wondered why she hadn't joined a group call and became further concerned when it emerged that Durdent Hollenby had missed a work meeting. One of the young woman's friends went to her home and contacted the police when there was no answer. As the authorities checked Green's residence, they found both their bloody bodies lying alongside each other on the floor. Investigators determined that Green had fatally stabbed Durdent Hollenby before turning the blade on himself. The couple had been dating for about a year and the horrific incident shocked all who knew them as there had been no reports of domestic abuse or signs to indicate that Green was unstable. Number 5. Iftikhar Murtaza in May of 2007, one of the most brutal slayings in Orange County history occurred in the Anaheim Hills community. 18-year-old Shayona Danek had broken up with boyfriend Ifkaha Murtaza, then in his early 20s because her family didn't approve of him. It was reported that cultural and religious differences had also played a role since Murtaza was Muslim, while Danak hailed from a Hindu background. The latter's family threatened to stop paying her college tuition if she didn't separate from Murtaza, which she consequently did. A few months later, 
in an ill-conceived attempt at getting back together with her, Matarza planned to kill Danak's family, whom he perceived as an obstacle. Along with two accomplices to whom he promised payment, he went to the Danak family's mansion in Anaheim Hills and abducted three of them. Mataza stabbed his ex-girlfriend's father, 56-year-old Jay Prakash, at least 27 times and struck him in the head with such force that he fractured his skull. He then slit the throat of Danak's sister, Karishma, aged 20. She was still alive as Matarza doused both her and Jay Prakash in gasoline and then set them ablaze. The badly burnt bodies were recovered from near a bike trail in Irvine, where first responders had been called to reports of a bushfire. Danak's mother, Leela, was found unconscious on a neighbor's lawn close to her burning mansion back in Anaheim Hills. She'd been stabbed in the stomach and her throat had been cut open. Leela remarkably survived her injuries and awoke from a coma three weeks after the attack to find that her husband and daughter had been killed and that her home had been ravaged by fire. Mataza was subsequently arrested at a Phoenix airport while trying to return to his native Bangladesh. In 2011, in a jailhouse ceremony, he married 20-year-old suspected murderer Marissa Starr Bilotti, with whom he'd been corresponding for several months. Their union would eventually be shaken up by the course of justice, as Mataza was sentenced to death for murder, attempted murder, and conspiracy in 2013. Number 4. William Riley Gore in November of 2016, a football player at Maryville College in Tennessee shot and killed his cheerleader ex-girlfriend, whom he'd reportedly been stalking following their breakup. William Riley Gore was distraught after Emma Walker had ended their relationship in what he deemed to have been a cruel manner, as she'd reportedly told him, you need a life. Walker was subsequently shot through the wall of her dorm room as she slept and suffered fatal injuries. Gore would tell investigators that he'd last spoken to her around midnight at which point she'd asked him to stop calling her. He claimed to have spent hours in the dorm's parking lot crying and looking at pictures on his phone before going to bed at around 4.45. Cell phone data would place him near Walker's home at about 3.35 a.m., around the same time when the gunshots were reported. Friends of his testified that in the aftermath of the shooting, he'd asked if they knew how to remove fingerprints from a gun and where he could dispose of it. He claimed to have stolen the weapon from his grandfather and that he feared becoming a suspect in light of his connection to the victim. His friends contacted the police. Gaul was watched by the authorities and intercepted by them as he headed to throw the gun into the Tennessee River. He'd eventually admit to shooting Walker but claimed it only meant to scare her, hoping that she'd turn to him as a rescuer and their relationship could start anew. He was sentenced to life with parole eligibility after 51 years for first-degree murder, stalking, and tampering with evidence. Number 3. Yvonne Wu In October of 2021, NYPD officer Yvonne Wu was charged with murder and attempted murder after shooting her former girlfriend and the woman's new partner. 31-year-old Wu had dated Jenny Lee, eight years her junior, for about two years before they'd broken up, about a month prior to the incident. Wu, described as jealous and possessive in their relationship, was unable to move past the breakup, according to friends familiar with the situation. In the weeks leading up to the shooting, Lee and her new girlfriend, 24-year-old Jamie Liang, had been involved in an altercation with Wu. Lee didn't report it to the NYPD's Internal Affairs Bureau, believing she'd be able to handle the conflict on her own. In October, Wu lay in wait and ambushed the couple as they returned to their Brooklyn apartment. She opened fire striking both Li and Liang multiple times. The former survived and recovered in a hospital, but Liang succumbed to her injuries. Wu told the police that she'd wanted to take her own life after the shooting, but both neighbors and arresting officers reported she seemed calm and collected at the scene. Based on the latest updates on the case, she was taken to a hospital for a psychiatric evaluation. Number two. Ahmed Shabazz. On November the 14th of 2019, Swedish teenager Wilma Anderson from the town of Udavara was reported missing. The local authorities, with support from the Swedish Armed Forces, searched for her in an operation that also involved divers and a mini submarine. Within a week, her ex-boyfriend, 22-year-old Ahmed Shabazz, became the main suspect in her disappearance, and he'd been confirmed as the last person to have seen Anderson alive. On November the 28th, the authorities searched his home and found Anderson's severed head stashed away in a trolley in his bedroom. The head was wrapped in tin foil and the authorities suspected 
Shabazz had kept it as a sickening memento. In spite of overwhelming evidence, he maintained his innocence. The authorities believed that Anderson had gone to the home to retrieve some of her belongings after the recent breakup, at which point she was murdered and dismembered by her enraged ex. Following a psychological evaluation, experts would determine that Shabazz didn't suffer from a serious or invalidating mental illness, but that he exhibited what was described as narcissistic personality traits as well as a remarkable lack of empathy. He was sentenced to life in prison but never admitted his guilt, while the rest of Anderson's body was never found. Number 1. Thomas Montgomery in May of 2005, two people using the handles, Marine Sniper and Tall Hot Blonde, struck up a relationship in an online chat room. As they began conversing, Tall Hot Blonde revealed she was a softball-playing high school senior from West Virginia named Jesse. Marine Sniper was actually Thomas Montgomery, aged 46, a married father of two from Buffalo, New York. But he decided to pose as a young, Iraq-bound Marine named Tommy in his talks with Jesse. The pair exchanged photos seemingly confirming their identities, with factory worker Montgomery using those from his army boot camp when he was younger. They eventually confessed their love to each other and had virtual relations, but also exchanged love letters and mementos with Jesse, sending Montgomery a pair of red panties. Speaking about the relationship, Montgomery later told a media outlet, it became more real to me than real life, and compared it to a drug. Notes written to himself revealed that he'd begun to lose touch with reality, as he claimed his old self no longer existed and that he'd become his avatar. Problems arose after Montgomery's wife found out about his cyber life and sent Jesse a letter with a photo of him, revealing who he truly was. Jesse promptly broke off the relationship and began talking to one of Montgomery's work colleagues, a 22-year-old machinist named Brian Barrett, who used the screen name Beefcake. Montgomery watched their love blossom in the same chat room and his subsequent messages became violent. Montgomery told Jesse that Brian will pay in blood and became enraged upon learning that they were planning to meet in real life. On September the 15th of 2006, maddened by jealousy, Montgomery used a military rifle and executed Barrett in the parking lot of the factory where they both worked. The police learned about the love triangle from co-workers and believed that Montgomery would target Jesse next. Upon arriving at her home address, they were greeted by a middle-aged woman named Mary Shiler. A shocking revelation followed as she admitted to being tall, hot, blonde. She had been talking to both Barrett and Montgomery while using the pictures of her daughter, the real-life Jesse, without her knowledge. Shiloh wasn't charged with anything, but her husband divorced her and Jesse cut ties. Montgomery, concretely linked to the killing of Barrett by DNA from a peach pit, found that the scene was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Thanks for watching. If you had to choose, would you rather dump on your partner on your wedding day or on the day that they lost one of their parents? Let us know in the comment section below.